one month we've gone through what I think like most restaurants might go through in a year within like three weeks. We haven't even been open a month yet. We just started accepting credit cards now that all our technology is working, but today we didn't accept credit cards. So cash money is king. I loved it. Everything went down. Fuck cash money. It meant that I had money to pay for the staff. The first day was fucked up. That was a good like 18 hour a day. And it's like an hour before we're opening. And I'm in the fucking washroom, like wiping off dust and fucking smeared like grout and shit. <laughs> Renovations? You thought that was hard? Fuck you, let's open. My name is Grant Van Gammon. I am the owner of Bar Isabel. A lot of people think this is a Spanish restaurant. It's not a Spanish restaurant by any means. It's definitely inspired by the convivial way of eating and drinking in Spain. The way I describe it is, uh, you know, this sassy, sexy, older, slightly chubby Spanish woman, little gypsy in her. Uh, he's uh, making a sea bream ceviche here. As a chef, I just had to say, you know what, you don't have to be doing something incredibly innovative and different, and you don't have to prove yourself on each individual plate. For me, it was about the progression of the entire meal. This is our blood sausage, a little bit of confit shallots. Rather than try to impress each person with each plate, impress them with an array of dishes, right? So to really kind of have that restraint in food and, you know, just do a whole grilled octopus, you know? It's not fucking sous vide, it's not fucking glued together, you're not trying to serve a square piece of it. It was really like keeping things natural and just very simple, well-executed food. So have some roasted crab legs, lots of ginger, garlic, smoked paprika, got claws, crabs, gets real messy at the table though. We use the water from all the crab when it uh, defrosts. It gets frozen on the boat. So we use that to uh, do all our liquid. The goal is to baste it in all the cracks. It's messy even plating it. I actually never even wanted to be a chef, to be honest with you. I don't have any kind of culinary you know, history where, where my, my grandmother used to cook food for me. My first job was really kind of at Pizza Pizza, slanging out pizzas for a couple of years there. Becoming a chef really became, you know, a necessity because it was, it was in my early 20s. All my friends were graduating with degrees from university and here I was and I had nothing and all I had been doing was cooking in shitty restaurants. So I, I made a choice at that time to really take it seriously and put my all into it. And then that's when I first started my decent jobs at Canoe and this and that. I've always been a pretty independent person. I'd always want to do things differently than the chef would be doing it. So I just really had to open up my own restaurant. It's delicious, so juicy. A lot of the food I cook now is just stuff I've taught myself. I never went to culinary school. I don't play the whole executive chef kind of status. I like to cook. I like to be involved in my kitchen. I like to have fun. My main priority is to make sure that things are consistent and tasty. And, uh, you know, people seem to receive it pretty well. Bar is about was just about bringing good people on board. This is Guy Rawlings, the uh, ginger kick. Are you hungover? You got the Gatorade? Very nice. You know, it's really nice to have a chef run the front of the house, right? It gives it a complete different dynamic. The way he talks to staff, the way he deals with situations. He has that kitchen brigade mentality, right? Let's do some cocktails. Yeah, do you know what those guys want down there? Michael Webster. I went to his apartment once and it was like literally, there was probably, I don't know, 20, 30, thousand dollars worth of alcohol. He opened his fridge, there was absolutely no food, but there's like 50 types of bitters and just simple syrups. That moment I knew, okay, I gotta hire this guy. Chef's hungry. Oh Chef's thirsty. It's good times with Guy and Mike always. Since we opened, we haven't had a night where we've actually been able to go out. I can generally be a control freak when it comes to food, you know, the setup, the chairs, the cleanliness, whatever's going on in the room. So it was nice to finally make that step and be like, yeah, it can function without you. We're on empty stomachs right now, so it's gonna get real, real yeah. messy tonight. We've been going hard seven days till two in the morning, um, you know, and then we get out at five in the morning, but it's been getting- well, I get out at five in the morning. Third week's better, we're getting out at three. He gets out in time for McDonald's. That's right. I get out in time for an empty apartment and a box of tissues alone. That's right. So last night, we uh, 
started our evening off at Bellwoods Brewery. Their beer is fucking amazing. We met with uh, Luke, one of the owners. My name's Luke Pestel. I'm one of the owners here and one of the brewmasters, along with Mike Clark. And this is our little kingdom of brewing. It's funny to sit here with Luke, where like, what, like a year and a half ago, two years ago, we're sitting just having a burger, and he's like, I want to open a brewery. I mean, like, near Bellwoods. Then to like see all the stages, we got a space. It's a fucking art gallery and has nothing. I'm like, y'all are fucking crazy. And then like within a month, you open and what? You got a, a gold medal for the Hellwoods. Baltic Porter. Baltic Porter. Yeah. And then within 10 months, fucking top, was it, was it third, third best brewery in the world? Best brewery in the world, yeah. From a burger a year and a half ago yeah. and an idea to third best new brewery in the world. It's too bad you didn't become a partner in this. Hey, you tried. He tried. He tried. He tried so hard. You're fucking stupid. You know me. I can't make any decisions. The only decision I can make is I'm going to wear the same clothes as I did yesterday. Yeah. Well, cheers to your success. Cheers, guys. Yeah. yeah. Happy one year anniversary. It's pretty amazing to see what they've done in just one year. It's, it's exciting to kind of think where they're going to be in five years. After you, Chef. Whew. I'm drunk already. Oh, boy. There, I can't there, even fit in this there. motherfucker. I used to be a rapper. Mr. Dukes! I also Mr. used to Dukes. be a reptile breeder. A hip -hop reptile breeder. Before being a cook. I like animals that are misunderstood. Well, I used what to breed, the breed blood pythons. I'd go to clean their water bowl and I'd smell like mice because I used to breed rats in the closet. And that's another reason why I didn't get have a girlfriend for too long. <laughs> and one day I reached in smelling like mice and this fucking snake almost bit my face off. Okay. Oh boy. Oh my. Time to get some food. And we went to 416 Snack Bar. Fucking crazy place. Busier than ever. I have lots of love for what Adrian, Dave, and those guys do over there. Like us, they are open seven days a week. They do food till two in the morning. My name is Adrian Ravinsky. I'm the proprietor and uh, barman at 416 Snack Bar. Late night food in Toronto until recently was lacking pretty considerably. My business partner and myself, we worked in restaurants all over town for the better part of a decade. And more or less, we, we decided at one point, like there's just fucking nothing good to eat past 11 o'clock in this city. So we opened this place specifically for people in the industry who are fucking hungry late night want good music want fucking tasty salty food and good booze exactly. that's why we're here that's why we're here the food was fucking phenomenal last night those guys in the kitchen they're working in small quarters they're working on the bar tops they got little lamps for their station so they can see what's going on take special people who can pull that off day in and day out i think we had some crispy deep fried chinatown chicken or something i think it was all cornstarch it was so fucking crispy and these crazy spicy sushi rolls. Good music, tasty food, horny people. Are you horny right now? Yeah, I'm always horny. I feel concerned for our customers. <laughs> that was too much. We're doing some shots of uh, bourbon and fernet or something, and I think that's where kind of, you know, I started to get a little bit drunk. I don't drink that often, so. Really started to feel it there. You know, it's hard to walk into something that a lot of people think are special or a great place. And you know, when you own it, you don't have that same feeling, right? So I think like walking into 416 last night, this is what something really special feels like. Next stop, right now we're going to Barvolo. They've helped us to connect with some amazing breweries and they've really allowed us to open our eyes to what beer can be. We're Barvolo, we've been here for 25 years. This is my father, Ralph. He uh, started this spot, and this is my brother Julian, another manager and a full part of Volo, and we run this spot. I don't think a lot of people in the city even know about Barvolo, yet they're, you know, they're bringing the most interesting beers to Ontario. That's a big power. <laughs> Thomas is a fucking huge beer geek, and he'll talk you off about beer. He has so much information, and he just needs to get it out. The Nicolor Stella 2. Only 200 bottles released in the world. It's extremely sour. All sorts of bread, lacto, pediococcus. Like, a lot of bugs going on in here. It's fucking good, man. You, you wouldn't even know if this was a beer. Like, you drink it like a wine. We were popping bottles, the, the McKellar Magnums, you know, all these sour beers. I think it got a little bit hazy there. 
checking back those sours. Who knows how many, how, you know, what percentage of alcohol they were. Hey, don't tell anybody we're taking shots of Happy Van Winkle. That's kind of when I started to uh, forget about portions of the night. It's always a great crowd, you know, they're super into like some crazy hip hop trap music and they're true gangsters at heart. After you. Champions! Woo! Yeah. Champions! Thomas, get in here, bro. I need my bottles. My yes, bottles. Thomas. Oh, oh man. It feels so good oh, to hurt so someone. Right. I've always wondered what filming <laughs> of gang bus. <laughs> Give me the other one. Like. Oh, this is gonna go everywhere. No, no, oh, no, 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 it's no, good. No, no it's no, good. No, it's wild fermentation. Uh, no. no, I'm oh. wild fermentation. Oh. I'm the first. Oh, oh, that's how you do it. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Police, 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 police. Don't open the door. Don't open the door. Oh. Ah, now you just open the door. And now you close serious, the door. Serious oh, game. Now door. open the door. Make right. sure there's no Yui. So much heat right now. Champions. Should not be drinking in cabs. So then we headed back to uh, Bar Isabel. Every night around the end of service, we basically do like this handwritten menu here from 11.30 on. So the kitchen crew are basically ready to rock and roll. All right, guys, let's go. One chef's over, one chef's drunk. You got a lot of colorful plates making me dizzy. I might just vomit on the fried chicken. We do some big gangster, you know, platters. This is how we do at Isabel late night. Brando's fried chicken. Sausages. Bone marrows, octopus, a little bit of foie gras over here, some ceviches, whatever the fuck we got in the kitchen. Do these platters, they don't make us any money. We try to make money off the cocktails, that's it. True champions, true champions at Isabel. A lot of restaurants near the end of the night, they start making you feel uncomfortable, like you have to finish your meal. And what's beautiful about here is that, you know, people will be having dinner and it'll be like 11 o'clock and you know, all of a sudden the lights will get dimmer, the music gets louder. You want to sit at the bar, you want to sit at the table, you just want to drink booze, no problem. Look at this guy, this guy is the best. Second best, second best. Second best. Second best. Second best. Second best. Yeah, yeah. Where can you get crab legs and foie gras at you know, two in the morning and get good service? So that's really what we're trying to do here. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's it. Good you're service working. tonight. Good service. Good service. Chef, you're working at 12 o'clock tomorrow. You Chef's best. showing up a little bit late. No, don't think so. I make the schedule right here. You're showing up at 12.